Having a boat has been a dream of mine for a while. Just imagine floating around on the ocean whilst the sun is setting, looking back at the land and cruising over the waves. Such a nice thought. Never did I think it would actually become a reality, but it was just about to happen. Oh my goodness, I'm off to get a boat. But this was mostly thanks to my friend Harry. That's my friend Harry. We met at college and although we are very different from one another, we seem to get on quite well. We are gonna go and get a boat. We're getting a boat! We're getting a boat! We're picking up a boat. Why? Because I wanna go on a boat in the sea. Harry works at a fishing tackle shop and he managed to get in contact with someone who has a company that sells inflatable fishing boats. And we were currently on our way to pick up our brand new boat. We made it. We hey, made a boat. We're getting a boat hey. from a guy, a very kind guy called Carl. How do you use this? Um, you click a button. It's got a rabbit on the top. Carlo is the owner of Inflatable Boat Fishing and offered us a boat free of charge in return for some promo through my YouTube channel. So please, if you're looking for a boat, buy one from Carlo, he'll be very happy. Carlo showed us a couple of different options, one with an aluminium deck and the other one with an air deck. We went for the one with the air deck. This would definitely be a bit lighter and easier to carry around. We now had to load this thing into the back of Harry's truck and take it home. I'm so excited. Let's go now. We got no engine, but we could just go rowing. We got to we got to get it all set up and get some other bits of equipment and all that stuff. We're gonna get some pizza. See you soon when we're gonna be playing with the boat. Yeah! Where are we going? Uh, right, left. Left. Right, left or right? Up, down. Where was the pizza? We're down here somewhere, mate. Hey. Overexcited. I'm not gonna sleep tonight. I'm gonna be dreaming about <clears throat> being on a boat. It took a few days to sink in, but now came the hard part, actually learning how to set it all up. Today we are in a warehouse because Harry works in a shop. This is where we're gonna be sorting out all the boat stuff. Sorry. Let's see what we're gonna be dealing with. Boat time. We bought ourselves a 9.8 horsepower engine, which turned out to be quite heavy. That's gonna be a pain to carry around. That is one big motor for the boat. But we figured we were, we shouldn't skimp on the, the motor because it could be a lifesaver. We also got some sonar equipment, which would be used to map the water depths, as well as help us find good spots to go fishing. They give you these sort of um, weapons. Alex, do you want this or? Or. This type of boat is called a sib, which means small inflatable boat. These are becoming more and more popular due to their ease of storage and affordability compared with bigger solid boats. This goes into the car. That is pump. <laughs> this is the coolest camera mount ever. GoPro attached to forklift. The boat is blowing up and that's about all I have to report. Whilst blowing it up, we discussed possible names for our boat. Pontoon Panda. The Pontoon Panda. The Pufferfish. HMS Sinkalot. We still haven't come up with a good one, so please give us some ideas. We spent a couple of hours fiddling around and trying to get it all set up. We realized that the boat with the motor on was quite heavy, but luckily we had some wheels that would make it a lot easier to transport. Was it 3.8 meters? 3.7 meters. Wow. When are we going fishing, Harry? Uh, when the weather's not like this. When the weather gets better, we're gonna go fishing. So today we have got to try and make our motor work. I went to the fuel place and got some fuel. We got a bucket to fill up with water and we're gonna try and start this thing. Oh. So we let that fill up Is it above the yeah. intake intake thing. So what's that, canola oil, vegetable olive oil? Oh no. Uh, coconut. This is motor oil. This is properly proper stuff for How engines. Oh, it does look like vegetable oh, oil. How much we put in there? Um, quite a 
bit. Quite a bit wasn't a very accurate measure and we proceeded to completely overfill the engine with oil. So now we had to drain some out. Yeah, we got lucky today, didn't we? Found found this guy called Seb who can, who's really good with uh, tools and engines. Ooh. Always make sure the bungs are up really tight. Just below the oil line. Lovely. Nice. Well done, Alex. Doing something for the first time is often tricky because you just don't have a clue what you're doing. But uh, after watching some YouTube videos, talking to a few friends, we managed to figure out that we are doing the right thing with this and we're going to try and start it. Let's do it. Yeah, we already scratched it up, by the way. Yeah, it looks like a motorcycle helmet, doesn't it? Yeah. First time. <laughs> and now it's running. We're going along in the sea. <laughs> and now that we had a working engine, it was time for our first trip out to sea. Oh, we're blowing up. Noodles. The noodle man. <laughs> I don't know why I'm filming this. Do you know how to drive that? No idea. You look bloody cool though. Boat is pumped up and we've got to now see if it's, it will fit in this van. This is the van we're going to take. If it doesn't fit, then this is not good. Oh no. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that, it sticks out. Can it go on top of your car? That's more like it. Wow, that looks super cool. Job done. Job done. <laughs> So we're going to go out in the sea tomorrow, maybe? Yeah. So where have we got to put it? Down that path. <laughs> that path, by my rough calculations, is smaller yeah. than the I size of the tree. tree. It was too heavy to pull along the stony beach, so we took off the engine and brought them down to the water separately. The plan today was to launch from the beach. However, we were about to realize that breaking waves make this quite tricky. Today we needed to break in the engine. I don't really know why, but the user manual says that you should run the engine at low speed for some time, then half speed for some more time before running at full revs. So today we drove from Shoreham, where we launched, along the coast to Brighton. And it was great to see the city from a different perspective. We also did some fishing, but as expected, we caught nothing. I've done all the hard work now, I'm relaxing. <laughs> oh, that's oh, <laughs> oh, my heart was racing. No fish. Every outing on the sea would need to be followed by a thorough clean of the boat and engine because the salt can cause problems and corrode the metal. All the equipment could then be put away ready for our next trip, which was in a couple of weeks time. And that is our boat, all deflated, packed up, ready for storage. That's off to work, mate. <laughs> now Harry's off to work. I'm off to do my not a proper job. <laughs> and we're gonna go out on the boat again soon. Somebody. England! <laughs> <laughs> 
All I ever wanted was to go fishing in the sea. Yeah. Do you want some more milk? That's beef, mate. <laughs> that sun is just incredible. We gotta get this and all of our stuff down there. And we're gonna chase the sun. It's heavy. My fingers hurt. Oh, hey! No! My hat is running the lake. I mean the, the sea. Oh. This is not good. The aim today was to catch some fish. However, as we drove up the coastline, the sea was just getting rougher and rougher. <laughs> you look like you know what you're doing. We look like we know what we're doing. We do. Look at that, Harry just caught a fish. <laughs> it was a success, Harry, you caught yeah. one. We managed to get our sonar working and it was so cool being able to see the seabed contours and even shoals of fish showing up on the screen. Caught nothing this morning, just fueled up with some chocolate covered figs and cake. We're gonna try again. Watching Netflix on the old yeah. monitor. So that thing is meant to find fish, but it's found us no fish. I can't find any fish. That thing is supposed to Catch be good fish. at fishing, but it's not. And I'm just here for the ride, you know? I'm just here wiggling my rod about. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. Cheers, brother. So a terrible fishing no, trip. No, never terrible. Fishing is never terrible. Sometimes it doesn't go right. But other times, it goes right. Very wise. Oh, yeah. Cleaning time. We didn't need to clean everything with the hose. Mate, I swear to God that this kid is so unique. Alex, what are you doing? Down the town, mate. <laughs> you have a bath or you have a shower? <laughs> so my last couple of fishing trips with Harry have been unsuccessful. We've caught nothing. And as most fishermen do, I have been making my excuses. Firstly, I think one of the reasons we're not catching fish is because of the, the weather. The weather wasn't very good. And secondly, I blame my fishing tackle. I haven't had the correct fishing kit. The lures I have aren't very good and the rod and reel I have isn't doing the job either. So um, I'm gonna go and buy a new fishing rod. Harry, on the other hand, doesn't need to make excuses because he's actually good at fishing. The other day he caught this huge pike from a lake and also this big bass. I looked at some different rods and also the huge selection of lures. It's quite nice, that's a nice, sort of instrument and decoration. This is the species that we're actually trying to catch. This is a, a, a sea bass. I've got a new fishing rod, a fishing reel, loads of lures of different shapes and sizes. Now all we've got to do, we've got no excuses, we've got to try and catch some fish. I'm in my bedroom getting my fishing stuff ready for my next boat trip. Should probably tidy my room a bit. Anyway, I got this new fishing, oopsie, I got this new fishing rod and I'm going to put the reel on the rod, put some line on the reel and then I can go fishing. Set me back about a hundred pounds. Now you need to get a special type of fishing reel which works in salt water and doesn't uh, corrode the, the metals inside. So the reel goes into a little slot and then you can screw it up tight. Currently all the line is on this spool 
and I want to put it on the reel. So I'm going to reel it on. I'm just threading the line through the eyes of the rod. And then we can attach a lure. Hello, Harry. Hello, mate, how we doing? Good. What, what, what's the plan? We got fishing! See you later, yeah, Harry. Right, mate. I'll see you later, mate. Bye. Bye. We're gonna go out fishing. We're gonna go out in the boat again. Different spot. We've got some new hope. I was actually feeling very unhopeful after our previous unsuccessful boat trips, but after a few hours of searching around the harbour, we actually caught some fish. <laughs> such a cool yes, fish. man. You ready? Yeah. Due to the local regulations and also the size of the bass we were catching, we weren't allowed to take any of the fish home to eat. But it was still such a nice day on the water and great to finally catch some fish. We are ready. Fishing rods. Box full of lures. Fingers crossed. The guard dogs. Reload! Let's blow up the boat. This is gonna be so heavy. It's really heavy. Thing. Alex is burning his weekly calorie, 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 calorie. Can't say it. <laughs> calorie limit. How <laughs> can you say limit? Go on. It should be just called just Harry. Harry's in. We launched from the River Estuary and then headed along to Brighton. There was a horrible sharp northern wind which meant we had to either stay really close to the shore or find something to hide behind. We found the perfect thing to shelter us, Brighton Pier. Above us were roller coaster rides and screaming people and on board our boat something pretty exciting was about to happen. It's a squid! It's a big squid! Oh my goodness, it's massive! Yeah! <laughs> I mean, I can't have a bit over the top. Whoa! Uh. Whoa! <laughs> it's already spat out all its um, ink. As soon as I pulled in this squid, I knew what I wanted to cook with it. A few years ago, I was shown an incredible crispy squid recipe by a chef called Mike, so that was the plan. Hopefully this knife is really sharp because we are about to butcher a squid. I didn't realize how big it is. First, I separated the insides from the rest of the squid and cut away the tentacles, which I really love eating. Squid are oh, just so strange. You've got the tentacles there, and then you've got these wings. Tube. This is where you get the squid rings from. And that is the squid in its different parts. Oh, I just remembered, I've got to take out the, the backbone of the squid. This is so cool. <laughs> this thing that I've just taken out, it feels, it has a texture, and it looks just like plastic. It, it's so odd. And I'm going to cut the squid into really thin pieces. There's our squid. I'm gonna take this round to Harry's house and we're gonna cook it up. Hello, dog. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm moving. Mum and dad are away. I've got four dogs. The outside comes from the inside. <laughs> I don't have to drive this thing. Feeding the fish. Feeding the fish. Are you ready for some squid, Harry? Yeah, I'm that we worked so hard to catch. Camera two. Action, 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 action. I've come round to Harry's house because he's got this epic fire pit. And we're going to use the wok to cook up some uh, deep fried squid. First thing we need to do is get the fire going because that's going to take a bit of time to heat up. So I've harvested all these square branches as well from the square maple. Look, 
I just found the new king and queen of England. Here's a box of squid that I prepared earlier. Doris, get down. Doris! Doris the dog is getting in the way of filming. And then I've got a selection of other things, including mint coriander from the garden. Coriander. Oh, and it smells so good. Spring onions, chilies, garlic, ginger. I'm gonna chop them up. Also, I prepared a mango salsa. I did that earlier. Helps if you plug the right thing in. Whoa, there are some crazy flavors in there. Garlic is good for getting rid of vampires. Garlic. You know in the street in Lewis, there's that little van. They sell the Indian street food and they sell pakoras, like a mix of vegetables which are deep fried and a batter. Yeah, all of it goes in the batter oh. and you dunk it all into the hot oil and it all goes crispy and nice. Chilies. Let's hope that doesn't blow our faces off. And then we're gonna add the squid to the bowl. I forgot the coriander. Vegetable oil. Deep, deep frying. To make the nice crispy batter, I've got some flour. This is a mix of gram flour, which I think is made from chickpeas, and uh, what else is in there? Oh, what is it? Rice flour. We're gonna sprinkle that in there. And then we add some butter. Hey dog, what's up? It's time to cook it. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I think it's hot enough. Oh yeah, that's hot. That's really hot. Woohoo! Oh mate, look at that. That's just curling up as well. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Grow your own prawn cracker. <laughs> Only thing missing from the squid now is some salt. Cover it all in salt. The squid was born in the salt and it died in the salt. <laughs> <laughs> Reckon that'd be enough prawn crackers? One more. Oh mate, that is unbelievable. Oh, I'm so excited. We've got mango salsa, we've got squid, prawn crackers, noodles, sweet chili sauce. Oh. That's quite a lot of squid. Yeah, like that's, that's one squid. <laughs> it's crispy. It's sweet and spicy. Salty. Salty. And when you can catch it from the sea on your boat, it doesn't get better. I would say it's a free squid, but <laughs> it wasn't free. <laughs> it wasn't a free squid. And the squid isn't chewy. No, it's really well cooked. Hey, you can just bite really through good. it really nice. Cheers for watching this episode of Alex and Harry's boating adventures. See you next time for another video.